Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul with RP1 series and Kerbal Space Program 1.3.1. In this episode we begin in a test install, so if you're wondering about the date or the funds here or the science or where we are in the tech tree, that's because this is a different install and it is one in which I am preparing for the Mars Colonization series, which is the sequel to the Beyond History series, and I decided that I would like to do that in KSP 1.3 as well, since it seems much more stable than 1.2.2. Uh, well, though, you never know once you get uh, deep into something, of course. Um, but yeah, so I'm preparing this and uh, this, uh, where we are in the tech tree and all the other stuff is actually based on the, uh, the Twitch uh, playthrough that we're doing collaboratively. So we're doing a collaborative RP1 series, which is picking up on a uh, sequence in 1.2.2. So we are already in 1986 there. So the thing is, and the reason I'm bringing this up in this series, is because I've decided to start uh, integrating other mods into the RP1 tech tree. And thankfully, uh, PAP1723 set me straight on a mistake I made when I initially tried to do this and my parts weren't showing up. I embarrassingly had the file path wrong. <laughs> uh, so I'm still, I'm still stewing about that. But uh, yeah, so you can see if you've been watching my rocket science series, I uh, have my engine that I designed in that and the lander stage and a furry stage here all placed in advanced landing, which seemed appropriate. And also I have a service module based on that placed here. Uh, these other engines have already been placed by uh, RP1 already, uh, but there are a lot of engines that uh, the Raider Nick special, well, uh, that's one. Raider Nick requested that I uh, I make a five propellant engine, uh, propel uh, pentaborane, liquid fluorine, liquid ammonia, lithium fluoride, and beryllium fluoride. This was worked out in RPA Light, and uh, this is the performance it gets. This is a model he had made uh, for something else, uh, though it was unfinished. Uh, but yeah, so that is a very special engine indeed, and definitely, even though it was uh, supposedly designed in the 60s, uh, they weren't actually able to, you know, do it in the 60s, so we'll put it in near future for now. Uh, that is a challenging thing indeed. But the main mods that I've been trying to integrate are USI, uh, especially the core USI stuff, and so if we see in Advanced Habitats, we see the MKS stuff from the USI mods. And you can see here too. And the pricing is up for grabs as far as, you know, maybe I've got the pricing wrong and we could talk about that. So we also have KSB Interstellar and you can see parts here. But there is a complication with KSB Interstellar. You see, KSB Interstellar has um, upgrades for parts that are based on community tech tree. So I've, I can place the parts, but if they're supposed to be upgraded based on technologies by in Community Tech Tree, I'm trying to see if there's an example here. Uh, I think it's mostly like the reactors and stuff like that. So yeah, here we go. Here it says power upgrade technologies, plasma propulsion, advanced plasma. Well, yeah, I think we'll need to change those into something else. But I'll have to see. So that's a complication in terms of it, uh, instead of just placing the parts. You can see they're reasonably expensive already, uh, the way they're priced. So uh, yeah, but we have reactors, we've got everything. Um, well, warp engines are here. Power generation and storage was where I figured they'd fit best. So working on that, and my question for you is, are there any other mods that you would like to place in the tech tree that haven't already been placed? Uh, stuff that has unique parts, obviously. We're not talking about, you know, yet another RD-170 <laughs> to be placed in here. I mean, come on. Mm, I, I put a long march in here somewhere. Where's my long march? Mm, that's Hydrolox. Orbital Rocketry, here we go. Long March 3, if you saw my video where I had the Long March 3, I have the engines for that. And so Long March 3 was placed in 1996. I even have solids, I think. Uh, yes, the Pegasus rocket is here. So yeah, anyway, uh, but yeah, if you have any other mods that you would like to uh, toss in here, we're filling up this area out here because uh, in both the Twitch series and also in my Mars colonization series, I'll already be up here 
and it was looking a little bit empty. So uh, that's just a thought. Let's get back to our regular uh, install and our progress with crude flights. All right, we finished construction of the next crude atlas and it's time to pick up that very lucrative contract. Let's hope it's still there. Uh, well, past the common line crude, well, if we have to abort at some point, I guess at least we can get this as a... Uh, why would they give a 1,095 days for this? Well, oh, now it's a 1,095 for this too. I didn't think it was that long. Hmm, well, that's generous. Uh, well, and we should probably fly faster than 343 meters per second as well. So um, let, let me go in reverse order though, just in case sometimes depending on the difficulty of the contract, there's a limit to it. But uh, first orbital flight. So we need a periapsis above 150 kilometers and we have to stay there for one and a half hours and that's it. Okay. And then pass the command line and break the sound barrier. All right. And we'll only build uh, another one if if this one fails, at least for now. Well, and unless we get another contract, of course. And that's because they are expensive. And just because we got a whole lot of funds doesn't mean we have to spend it on these rockets. We could do something a little bit more advanced. So uh, let's roll it out. Four days to roll out. Okay, well, it's an interesting looking rocket. But here we are. Throttle up. SAS on. No particular trajectory we need to get into as long as we get high enough. All right. Let's see what happens. We'll check staging. I mean, it's pretty simple staging. And we have the abort. All right, ignition. And launch. Philby looks a little bit worried at this point. Alright, two kilometers up. Going well. I need to speed up the turn a little bit. I was trying to be gentle. Also, we've been getting into pretty tight orbits. We don't want to necessarily do that this time. Approaching the speed of sound. And we've passed the speed of sound. Okay, looking good. 32 kilometers up. Should be around Mach 4. And we're getting ready for booster engine separation. Phil V experiencing more than 4 G's now. is in a good mood. Body of Atlas looking shiny. I think we're gonna have to do the pitch up and then pitch down sort of thing to control the orbit. Actually to hit uh, 150 kilometers we might need to use the little OMS engine. I don't want to have this orbit go out of control here. And shut down 226 by 144. Okay. Well, we've got some crude speed records. Well, maybe just one. I don't know how many have racked up. Well, there's 25 messages, so plenty of speed records. Very good. And altitude records. Clear all those up. But we haven't gotten into the specified orbit yet. 150 kilometers on the periapsis, and we're gonna have to wait until apoapsis to get that done. So, first of all, um, we go for separation. And the capsule is separated. 
and that should separate off the nose. Um, let's do that off to the side. Well, then we need to have RCS thrusters first. Okay, so uh, turning normal. Okay, uh, we would like a crew report here. All right, keep. We do intend to bring Phil V down, so we don't need to transmit, darn it. If we don't bring Phil V down, the crew port is the least of our problems. Well, we're hitting a few other altitude uh, records. Maybe we can lift our orbit with the OMS engine as well to uh, hit a few more of those before we come back down. Okay, we actually want to go retrograde because the engine is in reverse. Okay, let's make sure to get the contract done first. So we have to complete one orbit, one and a half hours. Let's go around. Okay, that should have done it. All right, we have to return home safely, of course. For all of these contracts, we have to return home safely. So picky. Anyway, uh, let's go to periapsis, lift our apoapsis up uh, one more time to get some more altitude records. I don't know, um, what's the next alt altitude record? Does it show me? Not really. I'm assuming 300 kilometers would be another one, so we'll aim for 300 kilometers. To some extent, the crews of the Gemini missions did aim for new altitude records, and they went. Uh, I think Gemini 11, they were very focused on that. Really wanted to make sure they got a new altitude record out of it. Because I think otherwise they weren't doing any special firsts. So. So, aiming for altitude records is a thing. Oh, this, there is a crew duration record of one day. Can we manage that? Yeah, I mean, we've got two days worth of supplies altogether. The electric charge... Mm, it might be a little bit tight. Let's not overdo it. Let's not overdo it. We'll do the one day thing on a different mission. Yeah. I don't, I think the battery is going to be a little bit tight if we try that. Okay, so if we deorbit here, we should be good for the Atlantic, uh, sorry, for the Pacific, I think. So, prograde. Okay, we have a reasonable descent orbit right there. And I, I don't think the, any, there's going to be any new crew report now. All right. I'm tempted to just arm the parachutes now, but we'll leave it. Let's check the info, though, to make sure they're properly configured. Hmm, altitude. Uh, I do like pressure configuration better. And I'm going to copy to other chutes, and I'm going to check the other chute. Thank you. Where are we? We're reasonably close to Hawaii right now, but we'll probably overshoot that. We'll end up close to the west coast, maybe. I certainly overdid it on the hydrazine, but if we could replace like the HTP in here with uh, more food, water, and oxygen, oh, and power. If we could get some more power in here. All we need is two batteries up here. And if we could get some more power this could do the one day thing a little bit better. I don't know how lucrative that uh, crew record of one day is and whether it's worth pursuing it or whether we should just wait until we get the Gemini capsule and can also do the two Kerbals in orbit. Uh, we've got this two crew thing too. So combining them might be the better solution. Okay, G-Force is going back down. Peak G's 7.1. And we are really close to Baja California here. 
Shouldn't be too bad to retrieve this gap seal. Full parachute deployment brings us to 4.5 meters per second. Okay, splash down. And recover vessel. Recover vessel. Come on. Come on. What? Okay. Jeez. Picky. Okay, well, we managed it on our first try here. And Philvi is back, level 1. And we even got a little bit of science. But more importantly, lots and lots of funds. 2.7 million right now. And, of course, we did use our most tested rocket, the Atlas, uh, with uh, minimal frills. So, yeah. Let's see what we do next. Wow, they're quick on the draw. They're like, uh, they're like Kennedy over here. First human, human. Kerbold, moon landing. Hmm. But that's in two years. There's no way. Um, very lucrative, though. Very lucrative. Uh, but certainly we should uh, take a look at our technologies and see what we've got. I mean, we haven't even upgraded the pad to have a rocket more than 150 tons. So, yeah. We've done a lunar landing. I, I feel like I don't want to upgrade the pad until I launch a probe to Mars and Venus. Do these two contracts. What's the launch window situation for those? No, I don't have um, transfer window planner yet. Let's just use this. We've got the Mars one there. Thirty-one days. Let me let me try and build that Mars probe. Okay, so here we have our Mars one probe. I figure it's about time the space community got to reclaim a Mars one uh, for other purposes, but. Uh, uh, one thing is we probably should wait for like um, early power generation and storage because we don't have extendable solar panels and these aren't the greatest solar panels and really expensive too. But uh, in order to power the antenna and the core, uh, we need this much solar panel. -y. Let's just verify. Whoops, let me get rid of that build list and this Delta V stats thing. Um, let's just verify what we've got here. So for main communication, we have this parabolic antenna and it says maximum effective range 580 gigameters. So that should cover it. It says power consumption 35 watts here, but 40 watts here. So I don't know which one to go with. Let's say 40 watts just to be careful. It might just be truncating an extra digit there. Uh, this needs just one watt once it's in time warp. So 41 watts, and then we are using these panels, and we have six of them. Uh, so in total, we're generating 90 watts, but that's only 45 watts at Mars, and but 45 watts is more than 41. So that's what we're going with, and we'll obviously have to point this way towards the sun, uh, which for communicate, if we actually had to point our antenna in the right direction, that wouldn't be great, but yeah, it'll be fine. I've made sure our instruments are balanced using RCS build aid and we're using, ooh, these thrusters are a little bit lopsided, I didn't notice that. Now trying to attach this back on with all those nodes there is a trick. Okay, and that's partly why I left the one kilonewton thruster there. So the probe itself is 184 kilograms, which is under the 0.2 ton limit for this core. And yep. And then we have uh, avionics here, a normal upper stage thing that we've been using. And then we have the tank and our trusty RD0109. But this time, the whole thing is going to be inside a fairing, which we have tooled. There's a new fairing for the top of the Atlas for these kinds of missions. So now we've got this sort of look going on. Uh, you can see that the RD0109 stage has 3,900 meters per second, which should be enough for Mars. If not, we've still got 462 in the probe for corrections. And uh, there's 1.9 tons, which is well under the capacity of the Atlas alone. Uh, let's double check the Atlas core engines, though. I might have had an old version. 
Well, I haven't purchased this version of the LR105. We'll leave that be for now. Again, until we need it. And same here. Okay, so everything looks set to go. Let's just move the fairings where they need to be. And we'll build two of these because, you know, we only get a chance once every two years to launch to Mars. And traditionally, they tried to build two of them at a time. So, one and two. Now we have to make sure they both get built in the next 31 days. So, let's add some build points with our new budget. Incidentally, uh, we do have to keep in mind that there is maintenance cost of 45000 And uh, that's per year. I don't know if the pad upgrade is going to increase that. I don't think so. But the pad upgrade will increase how much the rollout cost is. And that I want to avoid as much as possible. So let's move up our Mars 1s. And yeah, we need to speed up our building. Um, we have to keep in mind the rollout time. Let's just get to four build points per second. Okay, so that should do the trick. Unfortunately, they haven't given us another get a Kerbal to orbit contract. Got a first rendezvous though. I think rendezvous does not require docking. So that might be worth doing. That's quite an advance. EVA. So can we do EVAs? I didn't even check. Only on Kerbin. We have to upgrade the astronaut complex to do EVAs. They shouldn't really be giving us the first EVA contract until we can do that. I, I, I'll, I'll pass on that for now. I think first rendezvous should be done before first EVA. Reach orbital speed uncrewed and return safely to Earth. I forget whether we've done that here or whether that was just on my Twitch thing, the collaborative career mode. I think we should definitely do that first so that we get a few more funds. With our new build speed, I feel like we should be able to just pick these up and do them. All right, I'll pick up reach orbital speed. Um, and I'll pick up first rendezvous. Let's let's get things done. All right, so I'm gonna queue up two of the crewed missions to do after the the launch of Mars One. Okay, I've decided to get the pod suited to four days in orbit, and we had a lot of extra room in the pod, so I filled it up with extra food, water, and oxygen as well as electric charge. It used to have forty-eight thousand. Now it has nearly one hundred fifty thousand. But I decided that that wouldn't be enough, so I put extra batteries up here for an extra 48,000. That leads the pod to be 1.76 tons. I think the Atlas can handle that. Uh, well, it is also handling this bunch of stuff here too. So let's just add that in. 2.175 tons. Hmm. Well, if at the end of the day we need to have the little thruster make orbit, that's doable. Um, yeah, I think that's fine. And the thing is, I don't want to reduce the delta V up here, even though we're carrying 400 meters per second. We might need that for rendezvous. It depends on what kind of inclination difference we end up with. So, yeah, the one thing that we could dump is the probe core, which we are still carrying. I don't actually see any compelling reason to continue carrying it if we've got a Kerbal inside. Obviously, we've already tested the pod in general. Perhaps we can just dump the probe core. Uh, there is a matter of communications in that case, because I think the only communication we have on here is the probe core. I'll leave it be for now. And I think that'll be all right. So we're going to try this. We'll have to build two of them for the rendezvous and then time it right. Um, it's possible that what I'll do is I'll launch one mission and wait a full day before launching the next mission. That's why I, wa that's why I wanted four days of uh, supplies. And we'll probably knock out some other records as a result. You know what? Maybe as part of our rendezvous thing, we'll 
do the first EVA. I mean, we've got some budget now. We can do the upgrade to uh, this astronaut complex. It depends on how long that takes. We'll be ready to do the EVA in, what, 68 plus, so 82 days. I guess we can upgrade the astronaut complex in that time, hopefully. Let's see. Let's do it. 80 days, just about right. So good, good. Um, so just in time, we'll be able to get that done as part of that rendezvous mission. Okay, here we are with our first Mars probe attempt, and we've roughly lined up with the plane of the ecliptic by lining up with the moon, very roughly. And that's not necessarily the best thing to do, but we're gonna go with it. I don't have transfer window planner right now. Who knows if this is even the right timing, but we will see. And yep, we do have a backup. So if things go horribly wrong with this, we do have one more shot. And, uh, ooh, mm, did I pick up the contract? I didn't pick up the contract. Uh oh, hold on. We're gonna leave this out on the launch pad back to Space Center. Okay, now we're armed with a contract. All right, now we're armed with a contract and I think we can just go ahead, ignition. Launch. I hope this, yeah, well, no. Well, all the launch new vessels are checked marked, so. Wait, this says, doesn't, hasn't checked marked uh, launch new vessel. Gosh darn it. Well, we're gonna have the backup anyway. I didn't think that this would be what goes wrong, but. Okay, booster engine set. Okay, all good. Fairing separation. And that is good too. Primarily want to do that just to see the Delta V and everything. Okay, getting ready for shutdown. Shut down 233 by 164. Very good. Separation. RCS forward. Looking good. All right. Let's plot for Mars. Well, this is troubling. Unfortunately, it seems like we're a little bit late. Um, it is probably a better opportunity up here in 107 days. But the main one over here we've sort of missed the sweet spot of it. So right now ASAP is 4,375 kilometers per, uh, sorry, 4.375 uh, kilometers per second. And we have 20 more meters per second than that. If we actually create the node, what does it say? Well, 4338.9. So it's possible, but I think for our next launch, we might want to just wait the 100 days and get that sort of situation there. Let me see if I can tweak this and get something better. Okay, I couldn't find anything better, so we're doing the Met Mechjeb plot as indicated. We've got a 1 minute and 20 second stage here, and we're going to need to use most of the probe zone fuel as well, which is rough, but uh, here we go. I think we'll start at about 50 seconds prior to the node. And so let's check that this is going to be settled. Throttle up. And ignition. We can continue using this hydrazine while that's burning too. That'll give us a little bit more. We definitely carried way too much hydrazine. Maybe I'll roll the... Well, I don't have to roll the other one back. Maybe I'll edit the other mission and uh, reduce the amount of hydrazine. And also... 
I've added an alarm for the better timing and that'll be in 90 or so days. Yeah, what I ended up doing was using the tooled tanks, of course. And those ended up being a bit too big. Well, I, I think it'll just make our burn inaccurate if we keep trying to use the RCS like this. Though so it's trying to do its part. Mm, yeah, I think we've got enough margin. Let's just go. So, separation. And ignition. So we've got a bunch of stuff here. We've got a camera too. I've tuned the antenna to Earth. So that's been done. Well, okay, okay, okay. Stop, 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 stop. Well, that's not quite... That's not quite 20,000 kilometers, but it's close. I think this calls for a mid-course adjustment. We should do a status check on this anyway. Um, for now, let's just make sure that we're pointed in the right direction for solar power. Okay, good. We are recharging and we're not even in time warp, which of course puts the core in low power mode. Certainly want close to Mars science. And this looks promising, so we'll look back at it at that time. For now, it seems to be well set. If we time warp, nice recharge rate. All right, I'll add the alarm for this uh, correction burn and We'll be doing that even before the next one launches. For our upcoming rendezvous, we could do the one of the launches as an uncrewed launch. The rendezvous doesn't have to be with two crewed launches, it just needs one crewed launch. But I think it'll be more interesting if we had two crewed launches. And I think Naki Kerman here, I think Naki is how you pronounce that, maybe Naki, uh, should be our second pilot, so I'm going to hire her. And so we have Philby and Naki. I, I'll, I'll call her Naki because it rhymes with Philby. You know, we just unlocked the new power stuff and we've got this Ranger solar panel. Let me just unlock that, 178 watts. But is it gonna be cheaper than this arrangement? I don't wanna mess with this arrangement, but uh, let's just purchase that. Oh, well. It's not going to fit the form factor anyway. 50 units for 31 watts is excellent. I, I want all of these. <laughs> okay, uh, I think I'm going to change the solar panel arrangement somehow. These are definitely nicer. We could get away with fewer solar panels and save some money. Yep, here four panels gives us more power and is much cheaper. Uh, just uh, 200 funds compared to 900 with the older panels, so that's great. That's a huge improvement. And this stage, thanks to uh, dumping the hydrazine from here, now is 4,107, which should be able to cover the transfer, leaving the pro's fuel to make adjustments. So we will see. Uh, let's try this. The benefits of having two probes ready. This only takes two hours to edit right now. Okay, so here we go with the retrieval mission, the reach orbital speed and return safely to the Earth. It's somewhat improved from the previous version in that we have now WISP antennas. I keep saying WISP instead of WIP, but uh, same difference. Anyway, throttle up, SAS is on, and ignition. And launch. Should be plenty of margin with this launch to get this to orbit. For communication's sake, the higher up we are, the better. Okay, set. Oh, the flippy thing. Well, alright. RCS on. Fairing. Control yourself. 
Well, it actually has to point down now anyway. You can see time to lap is three minutes. It's only a two minute burn time. This is a very awkward sort of situation altogether. I should have waited till Apoapsis. This is not the best plan. This actually can coast. I thought it couldn't coast because of the staging, but it can coast. It's got these oriented in that way. Well, technically we just have to reach orbital speed, or at least a speed greater than 6,500 meters per second. So maybe I don't have to be so severe with it. Maybe a bit high on the apoapsis sign, but it'll be fine. Okay. Stop. Alright. Okay, looking good. I'm gonna arm the parachute now. Let's just make sure of its information. Yep, that's fine. Okay, we are entering the atmosphere. And communication is still fine. And flame effects. We've got an interesting signal delay. We are communicating with uh, Geos uh, with Geosat with Geosat. That's why. Nine Gs. Uh, just about hanging out there, right under ten Gs. Well, it says twelve point five Gs, but I, I think that was during launch. I decided to keep this simple. Obviously we could have carried some science or something else, but first of all we've got a lot of science queued up already. And second of all, I prefer to keep it simple so that we got the maximum amount back for it. I think we are over Australia. Okay, we have full parachute deployment. We still have communication. This looks very good. Our geostationary satellite's doing its job. Ooh, the heat shield blew up, but otherwise we got it done. All right, recover. And uh, first EVA, we'll wait until we actually have the two atlases built before we pick up the first EVA contract. Also our upgrade to the astronaut complex, which is well underway. But for now, we've done many things. We sent a Mars probe out, we sent a Kerbal up and got the Kerbal back, and so we did a minor mission besides. Uh, next time, we'll, we'll be looking forward to doing all the other things. So, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.